On today's episode of Identity, founder of Bukamuso Impact, Lesejo Serolong, hangs out in the Identity Coffee Shop. We take to the streets of Hillbro, Central Johannesburg, where we spent a day with members of the Hillbro Boxing Centre. What's Happening features the review of a yoga app, a self-improvement website, and a faith-based movie, The Case for Christ. I, I, I am an individual with an imagination my inner faith illuminates innovations in a space with infinite inspiration i was born free from all incarceration incredible living infallibly intelligent outshine with my inner being this is me impeccable as ever been i am you you are me this is my identity Wotani siyana mkela kwenye inkubo eno mfuto eni tanda kakulu engo leza shukene e-identity kwa napa ku SABC1 mzanti for show. Timu msasa zwenu uviwe kwa ala. Today marks World Hypertension Day. The main goal is to promote public awareness of hypertension. Hypertension or high blood pressure is a chronic medical condition in which the blood pressure is elevated in the arteries. During this day, citizens are encouraged to measure their blood pressure in order to prevent and control the silent killer. Here on Identity, we're all for empowering you with spiritual tools to help you discover and learn more about your religious, spiritual and cultural identity. To help us get started, let's meet today's coffee shop guest. The young woman joining me for coffee has a rich story to tell. At the age of 28, Lesejo Serolong is an entrepreneur catalyzing social impact and an advocate for youth empowerment, who co-founded Raise the Children International, a registered non-profit organization here in South Africa, the USA and the UK. In 2007, Lesejo won the Young Community Shaper Award for her year of volunteering and unpaid teaching in a rural school outside her hometown, Mabatu. She's also a founder of Bukamoso Impact Investments, a company that is promoting food security and sustainable job creation in rural South Africa. I took the liberty of inviting her over for coffee and gladly she obliged. Lisekho, welcome to Identity. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So let's speak about your upbringing. What was it like? My upbringing was great. I grew up in, in my Figeng. I think now they call it my Higeng. Um, and I had a great um, mom. I had a great dad. Um, I went to um, one of the local schools called Salt Blackie. So I think I had an awesome upbringing with my parents. Okay. Yeah. And how was spirituality introduced in your life? And does it still play in your li- in your, a role in your life right yeah. now? You know, growing up, um, you know, I went to like a Methodist church, but I didn't really have like... Uh, relationship with God. I didn't really know God mm. up until I actually went to um, a boarding school. And, and that was part of, um, you know, my journey, I guess, into finding God. And I actually um, lost my parents um, during the time when I was in boarding school. And so that's where I had my encounter mm. with God and um, felt the tangible love of God there. So that's where my journey began. Okay. So you speak about boarding school, and I know that now you hold a BA degree mm-hmm. in international studies. Yeah. Tell us about that, and why specifically that field? It's funny, because I started off doing um, pre-med, because I wanted to be a doctor, but then I realized during my third year that I actually want a, a holistic approach to development. I didn't want to be constrained by like mm-hmm. you know one um, career. So I decided to um, do international studies, because my heart and passion has always been for South Africa and Africa and development issues and you know international studies is like a multidisciplinary approach so you can approach it from the finance angle development ang- angle so I actually did um, a focus on um, education specifically for southern Africa and um, development economics so let's take it back a bit in yeah. 2007 you won the young community shaper of the year award mm-hmm. what did this specifically mean to you and how did it come about when I got the the nomination, you know, and I became a finalist, like I, it was great, but I knew that I was doing what I was doing because of the, the passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously it's a great platform because you get to network with more people, um, you know, and it opens up opportunities for you. But, you know, I was a volunteer teacher mm-hmm. at a rural school in, in Mafeking, and part of it was because... I felt like kids that were like in deep rural, remote areas were not getting like enough support. That's why you see some of them falling through the cracks. So I um, took a year off and really poured out my life if I could change a life and, and I'm glad I did that. Okay, so then yeah. you founded Bukamuso. Right. Tell us about its inception and why specifically that name? 
when I was at the LSC, um, I remember, you know, semester before graduating, you know, I got it, I got this offer to, to work in the UK and to um, um, run this company's Africa business. I took the job and I was in it for like six months, but then in my heart, I just felt so uncomfortable. I was like, you know what? I feel like I have a bigger purpose in South Africa and staying in the UK and contributing to the economy of the UK doesn't help. So I moved back to South Africa and that's why I founded Bukamoso, which focuses on providing entrepreneurial solutions to some of society's challenge. And I guess when we start looking at our challenges, whether it's in townships or rural areas, as opportunities for growth, um, because if you look at all those people, all of us, you know, our families that are still back there, they're all, um, you know, consumers, they buy, they eat, and, you know, everything can run out, but with food, everybody still needs to, you know, to eat. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges that you face, especially because you're in this sector and you're a young black female? So I guess the because the focus of Bukamoso is to you know incubate local um, farmers, and sometimes these are people that have no background in agriculture, mm -hmm. but they're they're passionate about farming. Mm -hmm. And you realize, like in rural areas, this this land, you know, this ample amount of land that's not being used. And even if you're interested in farming, you don't know where to start. You don't know where to go to university. Sometimes you don't even qualify to get into those institutions that teach agriculture. Mm -hmm. So we thought of designing, um, you know, a model that focuses on, you know, basic entrepreneurship. Because until people start seeing farming as a business, it's not going to be like interesting, especially for like young people. Mm -hmm. And there's also this negative perception. That's one of the big challenges as well. That you know, agriculture is like for poor people, mm -hmm. and you know, you, you you can't be a lady slave. Yeah, be glamorous exactly <laughs> yeah but then it's all wrong because agriculture is such a big industry and it's so sad that a lot of young people are, are not in it you know they don't actually realize i mean there's opportunities for for export we import still like a lot of food like in south africa you're very passionate about young people youth mm -hmm. empowerment and youth education right. so we see this through your after school program please tell us about it and did you achieve what you initially planned for it it's amazing because um, one of the goals of establishing an agricultural hub um, in the village of Manyaledi was also to um, develop the whole community, mm -hmm. not just like the adults. And we also run, um, you know, Raise the Children International, which you mentioned earlier. Um, we focus on providing high quality education to orphan children mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. I mean, South Africa has 2.5 million orphans. Mm -hmm. So we thought, why don't we actually um, establish an after school program and focus on like primary um, kids in high school and if we can help solve um, some of these challenges and work with the local teachers and principals from the get-go mm -hmm. it will make a difference for the future of that child. What words of encouragement would you give to young people especially young women mm -hmm. who don't see this as a career path at all mm -hmm. and they don't know from from moving from point A to B mm -hmm. so what would you advise them? Yeah one I would advise uh, young women especially not to be intimidated because agriculture tends to be like, you know, male dominated like industry. Um, and second, you should see this as a business. Like, you know, if you're not doing agriculture as a business, it's, it's such an expensive hobby, <clears throat> you know, that you're doing. And Africa, you know, needs more food and we, we cannot continue importing food. So you should actually um, research um, and start small. Sometimes people feel like you need to have like, 2,000 hectares to start, you know, even start, you know, in your backyard and, and you will grow um, and ask for help. Find mentors, ask for help. All right, then. So we're going to move into our quick word game and it's called Choose My Care Taylor. Yeah. So you need to choose okay. one over the other. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Heels or gumboots? Gumboots. Coffee or green tea? Coffee. Beef stew or mokoru? <laughs> Hiking or bungee jumping? Hiking. <laughs> Economics or international studies? Economics. Economics? I would have thought yeah. you would have gone for international <laughs> studies. Listen, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Sintulela umwazi uli siko serolongo kuba inko keli enga nyaniso kwezo limo kwa yango kukobi sabantu kwa ingalo ngengalo za mashishini. It's now time for a short break. When we come back, we look at today's regional story which keeps us in Hillborough. And be sure not to miss our media review segment which features a review of a yoga app and a self-improvement website. See you in a moment. This is my identity. This is my identity. 
This is my identity. Sianam kela kwa kona ni sabu keli identity kwenye nam uviwe kwa la kona paku SABC1 mzansi for show. Ingo smukishala nati. If you're an avid identity viewer, I'm sure you know that our team strives to bring compelling and captivating stories about ordinary people who are positively influencing people in their community. Today's story features George Ngosi, a former professional boxer who has a passion of making a difference in the lives of young men and women in Hilborough by teaching them boxing and self-defense. Let's find out more about his work with the Hilborough Boxing Club. Here's their story. This is my identity. George Corsi is a former boxing professional from Hillbro who was violated and shot at his own home by gangsters in the community. After his recovery, he decided to open a community boxing club for self-defense and discipline to try and change the lives of the young people around him. My name is George Corsi. I'm from Hillbro and I grew up here in since the age of seven years old. I decided to open this boxing gym because uh, I was a boxer myself. I was thinking I was going to be a champion of this world, but it happened in 1997. I get extended. When I was, I was from church, when I get inside the house, when I find guys the inside, there was more than, there were more than 10, 12. So they started to attack me. After that extent, I see, I think I stayed like two months. I didn't walk, I didn't make it. No, six months, I never walk. After I went that was I, the kids just saved me. You know, when the kids saved me, I said, I need to pay back for them because they want to save me. So that's why I need to help a lot of kids. That's why I see all these kids are here. I need to help them. Well, they help me first. So I mean, I must pay back what they do. They must know God. Then God can direct them what to do. Same like me. When I know God, God direct me what to do. Focus to God. God is going to show you the way, what to do. You know, only if you put, trust God and believe Him, you are all from the God is going to put you. So what? It's what you teach those kids. George also takes pride in teaching young people about spirituality and self-defense. So his gym doors are opened to everyone in the community. Learners from Pakistan can start from seven years old, where they now know what to do. But those seven years, they are not fighting. It's just a show. But they can learn from there, from seven years. Until ten functions were amid, from there can ten professionals. I want to change them more to be sportsmen and sportswomen, or businessmen and businessmen. It's what I need to see in it. Uh, you know, why I turn these young girls because I've seen them get abused. So I need them to put them, especially women. They must know how to put themselves. In Angale boxing last year, November. In the end, I choose at this club. Mitala la. So every time I'm going to maybe in some rounds I'm okay. Chima, calling pega bona, calus ba in zan. So I could see billing ba pega. That is why. In the end, we are most kind of careful. Na like, when a bandu abangani, they don't judge. Like, aba pega lan panzi, aba tiga lan panzi. So oxen in sana na bona. Ni afunu guti umdo ngani afuni pom dala, um dali afuni pom ngani. Because seven sana na mat different ages. So ni abona and different genders. Even those fun money, I'm not on Bazana, but then, yeah, we shop. Uh, working with George Corsi is very fine as our coach here. Yeah. He's not just our coach, he's like a father to us here yeah, in the gym. So I would say working, working with him is very good. What I enjoy most about boxing is boxing. Being in the ring, being in the training, and everything. Like, I would say what I enjoy most is being. In, in the gym is boxing. I started in 2012, and uh, just like any other kids here, like young guys of course, you know. So I came here, then I learned, started as an amateur. Like, on time, I'm having a lot of time, and 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 I'm having a lot of time. I came to I come to exercise and use all practice in boxing. So I came I come to get fit and then learn more about boxing because boxing is a sport and it's time to and then it's Nigele I will make a certificate champion one day. Ever since I came Lana, 
Maybe I'm causing a tsunami in the Lela and the Mentano Gulanga Panch, Marayon Kelentele and Senai. Senyas, we took him to my ends, so we are police, we are Kulmanaga. You understand where the problem is. So I know we are found that discipline, and that's, to my belief, it is the most disciplined sport in every way in the world. Is for the mina, which mina move on. Like yinang for no yenza. I stayed a month in Ian's boxing, but then we can't into so tired again. As we sit down, we can't go zero for yens, but then the boxing we can't into so tired again. Like it's something as if as one. I want to be part of, or not part of anything. Ngaba chelsi, there's a chance out there for everyone. Rang kalega ngane ngane beng fundisa, and I didn't give up. If unga give up on into yako or funa, it's in his own yako. I would love to encourage all young girls to come and join us here in Hippo Boxing Club. Come join boxing. It teaches you a lot of respect and self-defense. When I started coming in Hippo, it was very dangerous world too. But this team really changed it. So my hope is that I believe there will be more champions. Maybe 100 champions they come out of this team. And already there are more than 35 champions they come out of this team. This is my identity. Ngozi ku George Ngozi na Malunga e Hillsdale Boxing Club kukwa bala na tinge li bali labo ela kanayo. Jate mkuba eli bali ya ni kutazu kuba nani nenze uchinjo kuindawo eni sala guyo. Ukuba nani nalo ibali ele ngolo ela masiko oka nye lomo ya nga tanu kwa bala na tinge alo nga kwenza oko. Tumele ni nguwati kutile si Identity TV Show at gmail.com. Kwa zbani, nga kifuma ni tuba ukwa kababo kelibeti be msanzi for show kwa standi suitu sama bali. Let's take one more short break. When we come back, we jump straight into our media review segment. Today we're reviewing a yoga and fitness app, a self-improvement website, and an inspirational movie. We'll be right back. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back to Identity, right here on SABC One Mzansi for sure. I'm Viva Kuala. Umkambi we buka muso impact investments. Uli seko serolong. Usi na tesa kali nkubo yetu ngo mfuto. Sakrita ne mini na malunga e Hillbro Boxing Club. Goku, ikla shilokbone zamba pambili. Nanku, what's happening? show that more and more people are opting for healthier lifestyles by taking up fitness and workout plans. If you're embarking on a workout journey or maybe looking for different ways to meditate, then you'll love today's app. It's called Yoga Fitness and Workout. Yoga Fitness and Workout app is designed to make you feel healthier and refreshed, introducing you to new healthier ways to meditate. The homepage offers you quick access options such as poses, classes, favorite and notice. Keen to begin? Click the Poses tab to get various yoga poses such as Knee to Chest Pose, Channel Cleaning Breath, Easy Pose and Lotus Pose. User must note that there are three levels which they can practice their poses which are Beginner, Intermediate and Advanced. Perhaps you're a yoga beginner, you can click the Beginner option to see different beginner poses to explore. Choose any pose and you'll get detailed instructions on how to structure your body. Found something you like? You can simply add it on your favorite tab by clicking the heart shape and it will be automatically added on the favorite list. Click the classes tab to choose your own workout duration from 10 minutes, 20 minutes and 30 minutes. The notice tab offers you essential rules for yoga beginners as well as do's and don'ts of yoga. Make sure you learn basic yoga poses and meditation by using yoga fitness and workout. Dilinde nga mesha bomvu kubandize li sebe nzisele e piyo putula ukuzilo longa. Masinge ni kusikwe ndisete eslande layo. Yi website enikeza indeleza shukenezo putula izi nga zobo mbako. Kusuke la kweze mpilo kukio ocha kwezo msebe nzi. Ibizwa www.goodlifezen.com www.goodlifezen.com is a new take on life to help you with positive growth so you can reach your full potential. It's designed to inspire, empower and eliminate stress in your life. 
The homepage gives you quick access to recently published articles of the day. For some personal development and motivation-focused articles, select the Personal Growth tab to get articles that will develop your confidence and your spirituality. This tab will also offer different tips to overcome your challenges. Perhaps you're looking to increase productivity in all areas of your life. Select the Productivity tab to get info on how to be more productive and boost your creative habits and read on articles that will share tips on how to crush procrastination forever. If you're looking for health and fitness advice, click the Wellness tab to get articles that focus on improving your nutritional diet, getting fitter, and all that you need to know about taking up a healthy lifestyle. For some stress beating and self-improvement articles, click the Happiness tab to read different articles on how to improve your mental health and how to rediscover your enthusiasm in life. Take steps towards improving your life by adding www.goodlifezen.com to your bookmarks today. Now that's definitely one of the websites that I'll be adding to my bookmarks. Our next review is an intriguing faith-based movie which follows a life of a top journalist. It's called The Case for Christ. If somebody wanted to do an investigation into Christianity, where would you start? If the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, it's a house of cards. Based on the true story and book of an award-winning investigative journalist, Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ is a faith-based movie that shares a story of a seasoned journalist chasing a big story about Christianity. Conflict begins when Lee's wife, who is a Christian, invites Lee to witness a church baptismal and Lee is then conflicted because of his own beliefs. He starts consulting dozen experts with doctorates who are specialists in the areas of old manuscripts and biblical studies, and he partakes in crucial open conversations about Christianity and God. We all bet our lives on something. The question is, what's it going to be? As much as I would like to help out a fellow skeptic, what you're proposing... Lee goes on further looking for evidence and whether there are any reasons to believe that the resurrection was an actual event. Things get complicated at Lee's household, and now he's left retracing his own spiritual journey to becoming a Christian. For some spiritually eye-opening movie with some heartwarming moments in between, make sure you catch The Case for Christ. Before we wrap up the show, a quick reminder that the 18th of May marks International Museum Day, a day set aside to raise awareness on how important museums are in the development of society. It also encourages museums to play an active role in peacefully addressing traumatic histories through mediation and multiple points of view. Make sure you spend an hour in your nearby museum for different activities. Sifika ekobele nkwenye inkobo ye identity. Nina libalu kumala nati. Funani identity TV show ku Facebook, ku Twitter, o kanye ku Instagram. Kuba yonjo ya konyam is social media. Kunga bine kala. Kwa tumali nwa tiku dilesi identity TV show at gmail.com. Kum ufuye kwa la netalala identity sakunbwa nangye vek elande lai. Salan kakopsu.